Hello and welcome to the Comedy Slab podcast. I'm Shane O'Connor and he's Adrian Lacey. We've been described as the uh, the Cagney and Lacey. Uh, uh, <laughs> Which one am of, I? Of, uh, of comedy <laughs> critique. Well, you'd have to be the Lacey, wouldn't you? Well, I'd have no, to no, no. A... You, you, you could assume these things. You, you didn't run this past me or my people first. No. I might want to be the know... Jimmy Cagney. Do you know? Do you know why? I was worried as who was the attractive one was out of Cagney and Lacey. <laughs> it's it's Starsky and Hutch all over again, isn't it? Really? I'm, I'm not getting involved. involved. I'm not getting involved. Uh, if you've not heard the podcast before, it's very simple, a bit like us. Uh, each week, uh, Adrian and I will alternately choose a comedy program to watch. I'll choose one uh, one week, and and he'll have to endure it, and uh, then he'll choose one the next week, and I'll just simply love it because that's the kind of guy that I am. I'm gregarious and outward going uh, that we then digest is it. utter nonsense by the way but hey um i don't mean to interject it's possibly the reverse of that isn't it Absolutely. i think so i was going to say the the track record is the reverse but carry on uh, uh, we dissect it and uh we pick it apart and we talk about the bits that we like and the bits that we not so keen on and give it marks out of five at the end of the podcast we'll tell you where you can find the program that we're talking about and we'll also reveal at the end what uh what we're going to be choosing for next week's podcast so uh, should we get on with it and uh, talk mm. about hang-ups uh, yes. which is a new steve mangan uh or steven i guess he likes to be called steven mangan uh vehicle um just to describe the basic premise he's he's um He's a councillor, isn't he? Uh, and I don't mean that he works on the local council. I mean he's a he's a, a councillor. Yeah. Well, they council- call him a therapist, but I They're, don't want to ruin your gag. Well, it's, it's, going it's so American, well isn't today. it? That kind of thing is that. Is well, the, not know. necessarily. They they actually mean different things. Uh, but if you ask me to define them, that's when I go horribly quiet and shy. You see, I thought a therapist and a councillor were the same kind of thing, but they were different from a psychiatrist and a psychoanalyst. Uh. Well, the, the latter is true, uh, but uh, but uh, no, a counsellor is uh, on the, shall we say, the nursery slopes of oh, okay. therapy. I which, that's the, the way I see it. Which was the one the court said I had to see again. <laughs> All <laughs> no, no, that's four a of the above. <laughs> a reprobation officer. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, to geez, so what did we say? He's a counsellor. He's a well, he's no, a he's therapist. A, He's described as a therapist. I'm only going on the on the blurb, which seems reasonable because they've got the right to say what they've cast him as. We jumped in, didn't we? We missed episode one. We jumped into episode two, which is always fraught with danger because you kind of miss um, significant plot lines and stuff like that. And I, yeah, can and I was... ask you? Because I'm curious to know why. Because you set the homework last week. Yeah, um, I'll get you back this week, of course. But um, uh, why did you want to dive in at episode two? Is it just, just to be a per voice? Just yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was just it, again. It's the jeopardy. I just, I just thought, you know, we're on, we're living life on the edge, you and I. And, 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 you're and on I the just, edge of the West Midlands. On I'm the on edge the edge of London. Of London. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I just thought there's there's part of like the critique of this. I always think is how well continuity goes and mm. and how well you can because people do that, don't they? They'll they'll. I've done that loads of times. I've joined a programme at episode three and gone back and watched one and two to kind of piece all the bits together. All oh, right. So, I'm not so, sure you're typical in that regard, but... Really? Mm. Oh, OK. Uh, but So I kind of think, well, how well you can pick it up from episode two, three, four or five, I think he's quite telling us to the... As to the writing, although maybe that's not so so pertinent in this particular case, but we'll come to that in a little while. Mm. Um, but but we we watched episode. Two. I mean, basically the premise is, and, that, and I say I only picked this this part of it up by, like, as you say, reading the blurb after we watched it, is that he'd had a failed practice, hadn't he? A failed therapeutic practice. Yes, uh, ditto. I only picked that up after after uh, reading the blurb, but uh, useful to know that. And then that's they're using that as a kind of excuse as to why he's. Going it alone and doing his uh, therapy over Skype, in effect. They yeah. may not mention it by name, but you hear the Skype uh, ringtone, don't you? Or a similar kind of thing. Or it? something it's like that, Probably yeah. not the same yeah. one, yeah, I don't, I yeah. don't know. Which, I don't, they didn't need to do that. They didn't, he didn't need to have failed, although I suppose the fact that he has failed, also, when you look at some of his clients, that kind of makes sense as well, because he's, he's certainly he's, he's not... He's not on an upward trajectory, is he? When it comes, to, when it comes to the people he's, the people he's trying to help. 
Or indeed, uh, indeed, his life outside of uh, his laptop. Uh, yeah. I should say, by the way, it's not just a ramble all the way through between us two. Fascinating though that would be. We have got three clips lined up for you uh, to help you piece the show together. But um, uh, yes, pray continue. Um, well, so that's the basic premise: is that you follow the, the main character, Steve Mangan, uh, who is a, he's a therapist, a guy called Richard Pitt. Uh, his wife uh, Karen also features in that, and uh, played by Catherine Parkinson. Uh, and as and as Adrian's already said, you you kind of you, you the the lens eye view is the view from his uh, his laptop. I'm guessing, isn't it? Where mm. as you say, he's having conversations with with Skype, and that that's where I got the first problem with the program in a way because I kind of and, and I don't know if it's spending so much time over a Skype connection with you. <laughs> Any time spent with me is too much time. But uh, but, uh, but uh, well, the one thing that that really struck me at the start is because you're watching it in such hyper quality on a TV program, mm. and and they put a few little graphics like to you know like a little microphone icon or whatever to pretend that it's what's it, mm. and that that kind of doesn't work for me. It didn't. It didn't. It was. It's. It was all a bit too. But maybe that's what it's like because it's. I suppose to be in North London. I think isn't it? It's supposed to be set. I think. And uh, well, certainly that's where they filmed it. Um, mm. So it's in London. Maybe the connection is that that everybody's got fibre optic and they're all you know <laughs> nobody. The problems we have, you kind of think you you wouldn't make one episode in the whole time it took to do the series, would you really? But but isn't that isn't that an allowable artistic license? Yeah, you know, I guess the so. world's first perfect Skype connection. I guess so. I guess so. I mean, and everything else kind of makes up for it in in terms of. Um, you know the, the the quality of the production. I mean, when you look at the cast, the one thing that I didn't realise um, straight away, and I think it's worthy of mentioning it right now, mm. is that it's it's not scripted, is it? It's actually. Uh, did well, you pick that up? Well, I've seen a reference to improvisation. Do you know what I think though? I think it's too smooth as we see it. I can fully believe, I don't think they'd lie about that. I think improvisation has got them to that point. But you could still improvise something and then script from the improvisation and still, I think, get away with calling it improvisation. Now, how weird. You thought it was that way around. I thought it was the other way around. I thought they said, right, OK, we've got a script or like or a an loose, outline of a plot. Yeah, loose yeah. outline. This is This is what it is. And then... I thought it was the other way around. The thing that occurred to me at the end of it, watching the credits as we do, because we're a bit sad like that when we do <laughs> this this uh, podcast, mm. um, and I was watching the credits, I thought, why do, why do you need four writers credited for a thing that's an improv show? <laughs> well, so Steve, uh, Steve Mangan's credited, yeah. his wife's credited, I think, um, his brother-in-law's credited, and the two guys who now write for Steve Coogan write the Partridge stuff. Um, the Gibbons brothers are also credited as well, weren't they? Mm. Mm. So... That's a lot of lot of writers for an improv show, isn't it, really? Well, except you can argue that anyone who's had any input into the improv is uh, a force. writer. Yes. Yeah. And also, well, they want some credit for that, which is not just about money, but it certainly smooths it. Um, shall we have a little uh, listen to a clip from it? Would you yeah. like to set this up? Yeah, I mean, one of the, it's all about relationships, and it's about relationships between generally between two people at, at one time, um, other than the scenes, as Adrian was talking about, when you've got the family in the background and other people in the background, stuff like that. So it's kind of one-to-ones a lot of the time. And I thought it'd be nice if you could hear immediately they're starting to establish uh, the relationship between um, uh, Stephen Mangan's character, Richard, um, and his sister, who's played... By, oh, her name escapes me. Who's the... the oh, um, I can help you out here. Uh, She's from Space, my... isn't she? She was um, uh, Jessica she was... Hines, Jess... who I recognise I... from W1A, actually. And W1A as well, yeah, she was. Mm. But she, do you remember Space with Simon Pegg? She did years ago. I, I don't remember it very well because it was so many years ago. I saw, yeah, I didn't watch the whole series or series is, is but uh, <laughs> yes, I do remember it. How many series were there? The series is, is. Uh, the series is, is. Plural. I think. plural. I think there were two series. Uh, oh, two right, I thought it was more. But, space, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember Simon Pegg in it. I confess uh, I don't remember her, but... Uh, yeah, she was, yeah. Uh, she was in it. Anyway, so she plays the sister... Um, and um, they're having this conversation. They're deciding to do... I think they're setting up for further stuff in, in later episodes, but they're talking about uh, their mother um, mm. and um, the problems that they're having with the family. Anyway, have a listen. This is Richard talking to his sister. 
Hi, sis. You are harder to get hold of than Tracy Emmons dentist. What are you doing now? I'm just writing. I'm trying to write. Oh, what are you trying to write? What are you writing? It's my novel. You know I'm writing a novel. Well, you've probably forgotten. Yeah. I don't really care. Okay, I'm the bearer of bad news. Mum <laughs> has had a catastrophic relapse and is in hospital. I'm sorry to have to tell you that. Yeah, and, and what? And she uh, is going to be discharged shortly, and she is going to have to come and live with, I mean, one of us, but you. I thought you would be the one. Sorry, I'm not quite sure how you got to that. You've got space. I don't. I haven't got space, Richard. You know, I've only got a two-bedroom house, and Chrissy lives in the other room. We don't have space. Could Chrissy not stay in a different room? No. That's the room she rents. She lives in the room. Like, why would she stay in a different room? Yeah, why would she? I don't know what you're getting at, Richard. No, I don't, don't have you? the space. You live in the kind of UN building. You yeah, know, we and do live in... And we've got 42 refugees staying. Have you seen how many children are in this house that whole I time? I thought you wanted to adopt anyway. You no, and Karen not, and well, not a 70-year-old woman. So we now know how old uh, Mum is. Um, it's an interesting one, isn't it? A, a, a therapist who you would want to think... Uh, is a, is a caring sort trying to offload his mother on his sister who clearly isn't that caring either yeah it's do you know what though it's 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 at the opposite end of the spectrum from my family isn't it don't you think you know you know like in terms of realism I thought you um, meant your family literally you mean the series the my series family. my family yeah I, can I confess now I didn't confess earlier when you referred uh, in episode one or two of comedy slab I've never seen my family I don't think haven't you but you, I really need to do the homework so I know what you're referring well, to. Well, maybe just as a punishment we should do it one week. <laughs> if you've been particularly naughty, I'll set it as homework. And see well, since you're giving that. it such, uh, you know, flying colours, um, yeah, I can't wait. It, but, but that family thing, I think, you know, they, they kind of capture it more than most do, um, the realism with which they talk to each other, and I kind of... Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I kind of... It's between siblings. There, is, uh, there, are no, there are no relationships between humans on Earth crueler than that between siblings, in my humble opinion. Is yeah. it, Or is it just me and my sister? I can't, I, uh, yeah, no, I, I couldn't possibly comment, otherwise my brother would come around and brick me window, so... <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. How do you get on with your bro? But you've answered that. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's just it's a strange relationship, isn't it? Because, like you say, if you if you weren't related, you probably wouldn't be friends with each other. But that goes for a lot of your family, doesn't it? I guess maybe, or is it just probably my, all I'll of stop, them? I'll stop no. talking now. Is no, this no, my no, group? You've already incriminated yourself. Is this my group therapy session now? Is it? <laughs> it's only because therapy. it's only because your family have no interest in listening to anything that you've ever recorded that you're actually safe because they won't be listening to this. That's true. That's true. They're not stupid. Uh, <laughs> they might, they might be you just wicked, insulted all, all our <laughs> audience. <laughs> um, but so you get an idea, you get a flavour for the for the relationship between the between the two, and the brother comes in a bit later on, which I think again is another one. I, I kind of got the feeling they were setting that up for a big gag mm. a bit later on in the series. Because does did you get the impression that we keep cutting to clips of the brother? Who's supposed to be in some foreign land fighting mm. somebody in an armed conflict somewhere, and he looks like he's in a bunker underground. But, but yeah. it, it'll turn out he's just round the corner. I'm guessing. Is that is that? Well, what there was got? a passing reference, and, and forgive the spoiler. We we only ever spoil the episode we dissect, don't we, Shane? We try not to spoil the entire series. So there are um, still other episodes to enjoy. Although I got um, an email the other day from a listener who said, I've just ruined everything. I, I don't know what they <laughs> meant by that. You sure that wasn't your wife? <laughs> it was my brother. <laughs> Referring back to your family. <laughs> Sorry, go on, what are you going to say? I've forgotten now. It was so long ago. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, what was I saying? Don't you think the brother is? The, is, is it oh, and, well, no, a... wasn't there um, a reference to... Um, well, I wasn't sure whether we were meant to just take it as a joke in the moment. The Stephen Mangan character, uh, Richard, says to his brother Johnny something about the farmer's bucket, the farmer's food bucket. Did you pick up on that? Oh, I thought he was just he was eating like a pig. Right. And he yeah, said, it probably I'm, was that. But I did, I did wonder, away. am I missing the point that suddenly we're not in a war zone? He's at the other end of a, a Skype connection. I don't ask how they get that out of a war zone, but you know, and suddenly it turns out he's on farmer's land or something. So, yeah, we um, that that is a distinct possibility, of course. And, and then one of the other aspects that we've got, and I think this goes through the rest of the series as well, 
um, he's he's there are quite a few cameo appearances. Mm. Um, in, in <laughs> big name cameos as well. Well, did you get the feeling as well? David Tennant really got mm. into his character. He was loving it. He was loving the like the anger and the and he gave the, his character a bit of a speech impediment and he like the tension and the car. He really got mm. into it, didn't he? I thought. He well, was, I think uh, uh, he likes doing. Uh, offbeat characters, doesn't he? The first time I saw him, um, yonks and yonks ago, you know, pre the revival of Doctor Who, it was an ITV drama, possibly a one-off. Not sure it was a series. I think it was a one-off. Um, but he, he's quite a cookie character in that. And then he goes and plays Hamlet. Well, you can't get much cookier than Hamlet, really, can no, you? No. Three, three and a half hours of cookie. And do you know, the interesting thing with that is what occurred to me when I was watching Tenant, mm. like really going for it, I realised that everything I've ever seen Stephen Mangan in, he he delivers in the same... He doesn't do accents. In fact, I'm sure, and I've got to watch it because it's been years since I've seen it, when he first broke in Green Wing, yeah, his character, Guy Sacratan, made a reference... <laughs> I know. Oh, <laughs> he, he made a reference to... He couldn't do accents or something, and he's trying to do... He's, he's with the... Uh, uh, one of the other doctors, and they're trying to do accents, and he can't oh, do them right. at all. And I thought, so, I wonder if that, I wonder if that, it, it kind of stuck with me that. And I wonder if, I wonder if that's something that he can't, he can't do it. But everything he's, in, and he doesn't ruin it. I'm not criticising no. him for it because mm. he's, he's very, very watchable. I mean, mm. even as the one of the sex people in in Alan Partridge, he was fantastic, wasn't he? He was uh, Dan, wasn't he? Dan, How was the, he a sex person? He was Dan. Lim, you know, Dan. Sex people. Dan. Oh, was Dan. Dan. You know, and he's calling Dan in the car park. Dan. Um, and, but he, he never... And he doesn't seem to... Why is that? I don't know why that works. He doesn't seem to ruin it at all. I don't know. I've I don't heard know. It people... must, must drive um, some actors who don't make big names of themselves and don't make big money but put hours and hours and hours into accents. It must drive them potty. Yeah. Because uh, I know uh, there is nothing more frustrated and dare one say... Um, embittered sometimes bless them than a, an actor who hasn't got on by you know mid-lifetime mm. um and that could be a sort of uh, a, a mallet to hit themselves with or you know sort of um, notional virtual mallet um they'd like to hit Stephen Mangan with yeah but um yeah and but but tellingly until you pointed it out it hadn't worried me either and i hadn't spotted it i saw stephen mangan live on the london stage in uh, harold pinter's uh, birthday party not so long ago and i'm scrolling back in my head now i'm pretty sure although his sidekick had a very strong northern ireland irish accent mm. um stephen mangan's character in um, pinter's birthday party didn't so yeah you've got a point there i suppose he begs the question can you can you act if you can't do accents? I mean, give, given that the the whole the whole thing about acting is to pretend that you're somebody else, do, does that need to be in your armory? And for some reason, with him, and I, and I say I really rate him. He's one of the. I think he's a great actor. I think mm. he's a great comedy actor. And they're very two different things, aren't they? Very two different animals. But yeah. it, it just—I don't know why. I don't know why. You know, to get to this point where I've seen him on screen for over over fifteen years, and I still don't go. You know, it's only now that I realise that he doesn't do it. Mm. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure we kind of touched on this uh, before briefly in other comedy slabs. I mean, one thought is—I I, I seem to remember two or three weeks ago talking about another actor in a similar vein and saying, well, as long as the phone keeps ringing and as long as the niche you occupy is convincing yeah. and the work keeps coming in, yeah. then there's almost no incentive to spend hours and hours and hours in front of the mirror and with a tape recorder trying to uh, uh, perfect all sorts of actions, accents. Uh, but, um, yeah, yeah, some some actors can do it and apparently effortlessly, others can't. Uh, you're right there, you're absolutely <laughs> correct. That's I think true. you've made my point for me, if I may uh, say so. <laughs> it sounds like Lorraine's doing the podcast this week. <laughs> I thought Lorraine meets Ken Bruce. Uh, anyway, we digress as usual. Uh, shall we have clip number two, please? Yeah. Remind uh, me what this is. Well, this is... Um... <laughs> And again, I got to, I got to go, and I can't wait to go back and watch this as a series. You know, watch the the, the whole thing because I did really enjoy it. 
Uh, but this is, and I didn't choose this character because it was uh, a, a Birmingham uh, a character. Mm-hmm. There was the two pieces standout rising for me was this this the one that you're going to hear with uh, Richard talking to one of his clients, Neil, who he also happens <laughs> to have money to. Does, yes. does do we do you think we know from I know we've skipped episode one, but I looked at some of the blurb. I wasn't sure if it was clear if we ever know what the money thing's about. Well he did make a reference to it. They did a previously on hang ups right. at the start, didn't they, where they had a little montage oh, yeah, yeah. of what yeah. I got. And there was a reference to it in there, but again I'm not you're right, I'm not sure they say why he owes the money, but it seems like mm. a significant amount of money that he owes. But it was either this or it was the bit with the 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 pregnant lady, did you, uh, Daisy Haggard. Oh yeah, Haggard. she's very good. Oh, I, I like her. Yeah, she was yeah. in Man Straight Woman sketch show. And, very and good. They did a build up gag a bit later on, and it was either that or this that. And I, and I thought, well, because this is so pertinent to the plot, I'll pick this one. But this is this is Richard, the therapist, uh, talking to his new client Neil, who he also owes money to. When I was about fifteen, I had sex with my mum. Just been out drinking, you know. Who you? We were both of us, yeah. Yeah. Did you have brothers and sisters? I do, yeah. I mean, we we were very close in age. Lots of cousins. I used to have sex with my cousins as well. Well, it sounded like you all kept very busy. Then there was my stepdad as well. OK. Well, he was weak, and you sense that, don't you, when you're a kid? Yeah. So I started to poison him a bit, grinding up painkillers and putting them in his tea and stuff like that. How's he now? I didn't kill him. No, 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 but I, wasn't I, suggesting... I did dose him with rat poison once. Right. Yeah, he had a seizure. They knew it was me. Right. They found, found me. Oh, OK. So I accused him of fiddling with me. Had he been fiddling? No, no, no. Right. But that's how I got out of it, and that's how I discovered I'm quite a good lawyer. Right. Did you? Were you happy with your own company? Yeah. I'm still like that now. You like to be on your own? It's like when I spoke to you yeah. the first time, I instantly wanted to go around and break your legs. Right. But I didn't. Yeah. I took loads of coke and went to a strip club. So that chilled me out a bit. I, I, I just got to say thank you. You've been very honest with me, you've been very open. No, I used, used to take new pictures of me uncle. Right. Can we look at that next time? Not the pictures, but just the, the, the topic. See, I think that might somewhat answer your question about Stephen Mangan's accents. It's because he's so good at the... Um, I mean, obviously, we didn't get the visuals there, this being an audio podcast, but between the hesitancy in the voice uh, and uh, or the quick, you know, sort of recovery and covering his tracks and and the visuals, if you, as and when you see them, uh, dear listener, um, there's something very natural about that and he's very comfortable with that kind of slightly neurotic character or worried about what the what the rest of the world's thinking of him. And, and do you know, the, the, again, this is... I'm sitting there thinking, this is improvisation, but, but it's, either, it's either really well written or they improvise the scene and then write it and then perform it. Although in an interview, mm. he did say that how nervous everybody was because they didn't have a script, which would suggest that they are just improvising it. Or right. it's really tightly edited. And, mm. and, and I wonder whether maybe that's that's part of it, is the editing is so good. But the other thing is, um, and, and this can come back to uh, our old friend Money, you know, have you got time to do loads and loads of takes and is everyone fine with that? That's yeah. another thing, because the more you do something, by the end of it, it's not as improvised, is it? But you know where you're going, and, and the more times you do it, the more precisely you know where you're going. Yeah. I mean, uh, you can still... I'm, I'm sure that I would guess every now and again they they all want to throw each other a curveball and there's probably a lot of corpsing that we're not allowed to see that ends up on the cutting room floor yeah it's it's again going back to that uh the david tent stuff where he says you know you've got to you've got to have a secret character and he says, he says what about spider-man <laughs> and then at, at the end he's he's like this is him he, as a maitre d welcome supposedly so welcoming people, people to, to the restaurant, restaurant. Going, and like shooting out his spider wig sit there sit there kind of thing. <laughs> and and you, you i can imagine the crew like cracking up on that one you know and, and, yeah. and you're right and but it's it, i was just there were parts of it that if i didn't know it was improvised as i say i would go well that is standout writing it really is mm. you know excellent writing and that was that was I mean, it, it's laugh out loud for me and like i say it takes a lot for me to laugh out loud but when he's when he's to that end line you know he said and i used to take pit, new bits of your <laughs> <laughs> Can we look at that next week? Not the picture. Not the picture. <laughs> just, just my kind of humour, though. I just love that one. Uh, um, tell me, tell me about the banana sequence because 
I didn't get that at all. I didn't. I didn't. There was. A- oh, uh, I think. Yeah. Well, let, let's just explain uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it. Um, he is cramming a banana into his mouth. Isn't that well? We don't know if there's any time lapse. That's the thing with modern editing and modern construction of stories. Um, but if it's unfolding in real time, he's just spoken to this weird Neil character, hasn't he? But no, he's, he's put the he, wind he, up him. He takes a message like, from. Um, oh, from his. He's wife. watching a video oh, no, message yeah. from his wife, isn't he? Yeah, but that. But he's already started to eat the banana hurriedly. By then, I think he's just trying to cram in. Uh, he's. I think it's. You might be reading too much into it. I did chew it over, if you'll pardon the pun. But I think he's. Look, he's working to a schedule, isn't he? He's run out of time. Yeah, sorry. I'm to like, eat co- properly. Cocktails to, kinky it, near. <laughs> looks like Ribena. So I'm is he, look, is he, at he the trying to eat? He's trying to eat the banana whilst it, whilst. Look, it's a classic. The it's a classic. Court, the if, if you've yeah, if you haven't got long and you want the maximum energy impact, mm. and also not to completely ruin your voice, as you'll know as a professional voice user. Well, don't eat banana uh, for a start, is it? Well, they're it. it's better than chocolate or uh, dairy <laughs> produce. <laughs> Yeah, well, don't, no, you don't record a show while you're eating a banana. <laughs> but I have seen a news, a BBC news reader, scoff half banana seconds before going on with the next story. I mean, it's quite comical. Wow. Um, but you don't hear it because bananas don't don't leave a trace on the vocal cords, love. Oh, right. um, anyway, so that it's either that or it's some reaction. It looks like a neurotic reaction to having you know the wind put up him or something by this Neil character who, who may I say has got Bono style orange um, <laughs> shades, which look quite frightening in themselves. And the burning and of things accent. He said, well, that, that frightens me as a southerner. You it, see, it all I, sounds so hard. I, I refuse to find that menacing because uh, <laughs> I'm just so used to it. Because really. my Uncle Stan sounds like that. I'll oh, stick knitting needles in your eyes. And I thought, well, that's, that sounds nice. Sounds like he's going to do him a jumper while he's there or something, you know. So. Well, maybe that's part of the joke, but to me it sounds quite threatening. Yeah. But, but, but maybe it is meant to soften him and, and kind of make it slightly ridiculous that he's making all these threats. To me, he looks worrying enough that he would actually carry out the threats. It's, it's interesting... Um, who made it as well? And we, we mentioned that it was his bro- he worked with his brother Nora and his wife because mm. um, it's made by Slam Films, isn't it? Which is actually Stephen mm. Stephen and his wife's company. Ah, uh, right. It's their production company. He's he's married to Louise Delamere, mm. um, and um, he's I think he co-wrote it with his brother Robert, didn't he? I think it was the co-writer Robert Delamere. Yes, uh, and so, uh, Robert's also a director as well. That's right. So it's like a kind of real. It's almost like a family family business. And I think it's an either third thing they've made as a production company as well. So it's kind of it's a new venture for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've made a film for TV and a and a, and a an ordinary feature film as well. Um, but I don't know if you know as well. The whole thing came from. Well, we've got friends to thank for this, haven't we? This we did have you, Liz, uh, Is it pronounced Kudrow? Kudrow, yeah. Who who played Phoebe, didn't she? I think in French. Ah, uh, yes. Now talk of neurotic. Yeah, in the states it was known as web therapy, so it does what it says on the tin. And it actually Over started here, online, I, didn't it? Uh, I think I've read that. Yes, I'm sure you're right. Yeah, it was, it was like, because I mean, you, you were. We've already well, talked about this before, haven't we? About you know, we, we do sort of stuff that's on TV and radio. Mm. And online as well. And interestingly enough, I didn't. Did you get time to have a, a listen to or a look at web therapy at all? No, I wanted to. I, I tell you what, I spent the time on because you showed me up last week. You'd obviously done your homework on all the actors. I spent hours reading up on the actors. Can't remember any of it, but um, uh, no, I wanted to look at that. What, what did you make of it? Presumably, you went back to uh, to the beginning. As it were, with web therapy? Yeah, I, I th- well, I think it was <laughs> series one, episode two. <laughs> you perv. <laughs> no, I, did, I didn't. I think I looked at the first episode. Or, no. Is it still there online, then? Yeah, there, there, are bits, there are bits and episodes and stuff online of it. I, I didn't... And I only gave it the scantiest of, of looks, but I didn't, I didn't really... I didn't think that it was a patch on what Steve Mangan and co. have produced. I thought... I thought mm. th- you know, I don't know whether it's because it's a different sense of humour. Um, sometimes it travels, sometimes it doesn't. But I thought that um, what Stephen Mangan has produced is infinitely superior to to, to web therapy. They've right. taken it in a slightly different direction as well, I think, and they've done more. There's more of a static nature about the one that we've got, because which probably wouldn't wouldn't wash with a shorter attention 
American <laughs> audience, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I, who, who knows? They they do hours of um, of uh, research onto all of this, don't they? As to they know. do. I mean, yeah, we don't want to insult our American friends, cause some of whom will be listening to this, of course, um, with the global phenomenon that is uh, Comedy Slab. Um, but I do think our title is better because it's, it's double meaning, which I think is nice and sassy. Hang-ups, yeah. as in yeah. hanging up the phone, hanging up Skype. Um, and, yeah, so that's uh, it's already a bit more sophisticated in terms of how it's selling itself. I am still curious to see it, even if, uh, uh, as I'm... Sure, uh, uh, you're saying it's the case. It's a, it's an inferior model, um, but it's it's interesting to see how these things start out. And I think it's very encouraging that something can start on the web now. Um, Although it's refreshing, yeah. And, and it was. I, I tell you what. The, I just remember what it was when we we reviewed uh, Dear Joan and Jerrica. Mm. That that was because that's sort of that's started a podcast, to, yeah. as a podcast, yeah, yeah kind of thing, mm. and whether it gets picked up. It is encouraging in a way, but then, of course, in another, you know, you're not getting nobody's starting things. I mean, when if Lisa no, Kudrow no. starts something on the web, it's a bit different to if you and I start something on the web, isn't it? And so the the fame currency still, still you know, carries a lot of weight, really. Should we, should we listen to our final clip anyway? Because yes. I, I wanted to put this one in because it's it's – not an expected twist, but a twist nonetheless, um, to find out that near the end of the episode, and I'm guessing this happened in the first episode as well and happens in the other ones, but, but our therapist, Richard, is actually in therapy himself, isn't he? Hmm. Who better to play his therapist? Than, than Richard E. Grant. Than the wild and wacky... I mean, he's just... <laughs> whenever he's in anything, he brings he brings a bit of Richard E. Grant magic doesn't he don't you think he's just uh i i have to say i'm i'm not particularly a fan but i was a fan of him in this context up to a point anyway let's oh. hear the clip okay uh thank you for taking this call i'm sorry this is uh out of the blue um I, i've done something really stupid I... bob dylan you cannot be wise and in love at the same time right thank you are you in love? Yeah, I love my wife. But? No, I try to compete with her. I try to be a success, to prove my worth. Do you conquer her vulva? Oh, I'm all over her vulva. Tongue or penis or both? Whatever's to hand. Hand, third option. You know, whatever it takes to show her that I love her. That's very healthy, Richard. That area is in a good place. And actually thinking about it makes me feel pretty good. So in the bed, you feel that you've got balloon-sized testicles and an enormous phallus. Is that the contradiction that we're talking about here? Yes, I think that's it. I think you've hit it on the head. My bed is my domain. In bed, I'm Aslan in Narnia. Mm -hmm. In the world, I'm... Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah. Height-impaired, powerless and very, very angry. Yeah. You feel in your family that you're surrounded by a giant of a father. Yeah. A monstrous giant of a brother. And I'm the angry little troll. An angry little troll. Um, yeah, Richard E. Grant. Oh, no, first of all, uh, I happen to know um, that therapists do have their own therapists. I'm not sure how much the chain goes up. You know, is there someone above the Richard E. Grant character? Do they have then to have their own therapist? Is that they do. It's, it's, it's how they offload all the crap they get from their uh, clients I've to stop them before. going bonkers because yeah, what you I've... don't want is your therapist to go bonkers although yeah. um i have to say richard pitt is <laughs> close to the edge is he not yeah it's yeah it's like a support network isn't it it's that, uh, yeah. that kind of thing uh, talk, talking about you know whether, whether you have to do things i have to suggest at this point that any and i don't know if it's just my curious mind but any improvised comedy I think it should be the law that you have to make a behind-the-scenes video so you showed people how you did it because it's going to send me mad Ooh. otherwise. Don't you yeah. think? I mean, in this, in this well, day and age that, of extras. But, but you've drawn a parallel previously in a previous comedy slab to, um, you know, it's a bit like the, seeing how the magician does his or her trick. Mm. You don't really want to know, do you? You want do, to believe his magic, yes, don't you? Yes, I do. I do want to know. <laughs> you bore. You're, You're just bore. driving me bonkers. Um this has been, um, I think, quite widely accepted as a as a decent comedy. Although, can I just... I found a review, and I just want to quickly just tell you. 
mm. what this review says because I don't know what happened to this person or what. Is Stephen this from Mangan... an angry troll? By any chance? I, for, I don't know what Stephen <laughs> Mangan did to this person, um, mm. but and I'll just give you. It, it says um, the the topics they choose to cover and the jokes are not interesting, funny, or entertaining. The main character is one of the most unpleasant creatures I've seen on earth. It's such a shame they wasted so much money and talent on this dirt. To those who may find my review biased, believe me, it's not. I have a huge interest in psychology. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit like Alan Partridge when he went, don't phone in saying it's racist, it's not. It says, is, that, is that your brother again? This is, this is the review. It says, and this we worry about upsetting people. It says, I'm used to all sorts of discussions. It's just that the content is extremely unoriginal and ugly. They wanted to make every second of this show as noisy and despicable as possible and succeeded. <laughs> also, it's like they tried to copy USA Touch style TV with all its glossiness, speed and cartoonish characters. It makes it all even worse. There are not so many things in art that make you lose your faith in humanity. This one does it perfectly. And I thought the Daily Telegraph were much politer than that. but not, uh... Nine out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> For effort, <laughs> bum, bum. I just thought, what where, on where, earth? Is, is mean, that I, by any chance a, that's a below the line comment? Is it not? This, or, where did you find that? Shall I say? Or I, I didn't really, oh. I didn't really want to say. I'll tell you off air where but, I found it. Uh, okay. Oh dear, but, that bad, eh? But hang on, I think there should be a law whereby you have to tell us if we're going to see behind the scenes how they improvise. Now. I'll have to wait. I I'm might gonna, tell you, dear listener. I'm going to have to when, we, when this week. podcast out. I'm going to have to tweet Steve Mangan and say you might be interested to know we're reviewing your, you know, as as one of the most unpleasant creatures on <laughs> earth that I've ever seen. You might want to know we're reviewing your show, <laughs> which I just love. I'll be thought, convinced oh you're the uh, you're the critic in question. Yeah. The, nev- the never ending ugly ramblings and faces are killing me. That's- <laughs> Oh my I, God. I thought that was a reference to what I'm looking at, uh, your face on Skype uh, See, all the way from the Midlands. There's a reason why we don't show you in the podcast. I knew it did generate then into this. I, I knew it. I knew it. Um, yeah. We're running out of time, aren't we, for uh, we for, this, for this episode? I mean, we've got to give it a five out of uh, five to... Uh, I've got to give it a five out. Are you telling me how many stars to rate it? <laughs> I don't know what I'm telling you. I'm just sorry. I'm just You've got to do autopilot, haven't you? You're so the angry. Never, the never ending ugly ramblings and faces are killing me. It just sounds like this podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say, I'll do some technical stuff before we get to the. Um, you obviously decided you're giving it five stars out of five. Come on, well, you're, you're the most despicable looking creature on earth. <laughs> No, actually, I, I want to work with you because uh, the graphic for this show, you have actually made me look the most despicable, ugly creature on earth. And the truth is, I confess, I took the photo. It's a selfie. Yeah. But if people have seen it, the logo, um, which I sort of gave you the idea for, you've made me plug ugly. You've distorted it and you've covered it up. I haven't distorted so- it. It's exactly <laughs> as it was. That's to your face. Well, I to be did fair. Well- <clears throat> yeah. To be fair, you look as ugly, if not uglier, in your own rendition of your face. Yeah, your but graphic. I'm obviously more comfortable with that. That's the that's the difference. <laughs> I I thought you were you were looking for a, a Wilfred Bramble kind of look. I thought that was uh... well. I think you gave me that. I didn't ask for it. Anyway, I'm going to just before the star rating. I'm just going to do the technical stuff. A uh, reminder: it's um, produced by Slam Films. I'm going to go into the distributors because that's the kind of nerd I am. Mm. Uh, distributed uh, jointly by Fremantle Media and. Uh, Channel 4 Television Corporation, which is a bit of a clue uh, because um, Shane teased you right at the top of the uh, the slab this week that uh, we'd eventually tell you how you can see it. Uh, in the UK, at least, it is still, as we speak, on all four. That's an app you can get on your little phone or via online um, uh, website streaming. Well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, just take yourself to um, all four. As we speak, it's got... Has it got a month left on it? Something like that. Oh, no, three weeks, something like mm. that. Um, but the good news is, beyond that and beyond the shores of the UK, um, it is going to be available as a DVD on network DVDs. That's the label, as it were, from October the 1st. That at least I, is the I think UK it'll go date. to Amazon and that as well. You know, I think. I, I yeah. Think that they'll, well, you can get a DVD via Amazon, but yeah. you mean um, sort of download? Yeah, Amazon download, streaming. yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or Netflix or whatever the whatever the whatever they decide to go with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Uh, is it time to uh, to rate it? 
Yes, 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 yes. Can I let you go first? Because once yes. again, I've failed to think in advance. I've got a rough idea of the ballpark. I haven't enjoyed a new comedy such as this in quite quite a time. I really, really, really? enjoyed it. I really, I laughed out loud a couple of times. I'll give it four and a half. Four and a half out of five. Is that what you gave Stath Let's Flats? I think so, yeah, because, again, I, and I have to say, I've watched the whole series of Stath now off the back of what we did. Um, you must have I... longer days in the Midlands than we do down here. Our days only last 24 hours, and I have no time to watch TV other than the homework you sent me. It's, do you know what it is? It's my guilty pleasure when I get into bed at night. Yeah. After looking after my son, and then, and then I think, you know, and everything's quiet, and I just I get the laptop out, the wife's asleep. Doesn't, uh, doesn't your laughter wake her up, though? Get, yeah, I'm sometimes crying, when yeah. I'm shaking like this, she'll go, what are you watching? Uh, there's a lot of merriment in our bed, that's all I can tell you. Uh, so, so, yeah, <laughs> pop, on, hear it. pop on the old headphones, and, I, and, I, and, that's, and that's my kind of reward for, the, uh, for you know, whatever I've done that day. I think, oh, I'll watch that. And I'll, and I'll watch, I'll watch a, you know, a half an hour episode rather than sit and watch the TV. So, yeah. Right. Um, but it did made me really laugh. Four, four and a half, definitely. Yeah. Okay, I could definitely give it three and a half. It's whether I can creep up to four. I don't know. I've generally been a bit harsher on my mark. No, that's not true. Is it? You gave um, last week's show two. Um, I am going to. I don't know what it is. What's my reservation? Um, I just, I just maybe it's not quite as up my street as it is for you, but it is brilliant. And we're not even mentioned. Um, I love these star names they virtually throw away. You've mentioned David Tennant, of course, but Charles Dance is his dad, for goodness sake. I know, I know. I mean, Celia just to Rimmery. have someone of that quality. Yeah, we, we didn't say it, but yeah, the mum. Yeah, Piers uh, and Max Amazing episode, quality yeah. cast. Maybe I'm talking myself into, uh, oh, hang the expense. I'll give it a four star rating just Ooh, in that kind of mood. Four. I know. So and I've not even had my G and T yet. Eight and a half out of uh, ten. If you like the podcast, by the way, don't forget you can catch us on all the uh, on all the web catchers, uh, pod catchers, <laughs> uh, child catchers, catchers in the rye. If, Careful <laughs> if you like. Uh, is it was it just Jiddy Bang Bang? I forget where the child catcher was from. Uh, the rye uh, catcher. But uh, and now we're, uh, we've added Spotify as well, which is I'm quite pleased about. We're actually on Spotify. Mm. Uh, iTunes and Apple Podcasts, you get two for the price of one there now, depending on what age you are. Mm. Uh, Spreaker, YouTube, you name I it. Heart Radio. Yeah, and, it, and basically, if you just if you go onto Twitter, Facebook, if you just put in Comedy Slab, generally we'll pop up. It's, we uh, will. It's a bit like well, those those weeds on the TV advert. Yes. Time. Uh, you can put down weed and feed all you like, but we'll, yeah. we'll still be back next week. Um, it, I mean, strictly speaking, the handle uh, on uh, Twitter and Facebook is at Comedy Slab. But as Shane says, you would have found us anyway, I'm sure. Come on, then. Don't don't keep me in suspenders any longer. Let's let's be having Ooh, it. You're, um, I think you're referring to uh, homework. I just had an image of you in suspenders, so that's my <laughs> fault for giving you that gag, I'm sure, a few weeks ago. Um uh, uh, yeah, you can have it though. Um, one, one right, of the most unpleasant creatures I've seen on earth. He said. <laughs> <laughs> it's all but enough sense. about me. <laughs> now here's the thing. I know we were only looking at a BBC or listening to a BBC radio show last week that I chose. Yeah. But hey, look, we're alternating here between TV and radio. You and I love radio anyway. Mm. That's how we met, darling, through a crowded studio um, mm. in in the uh, East Midlands. So. Um, uh, for our date night next week uh, on Comedy Slab, I'm going to s- suggest yet another BBC Studios production. It's on Radio 4. Um, the series ha- has finished, but it is available on uh, BBC iPlayer Radio. And I'll see if I can find any other um, places to find either this show or the artiste, who is Sarah Randall, for there is only one artiste. It is a one-woman show. Yeah. It is, in my opinion quite brilliant um she is just telling the story of her life we can discuss when we reconvene next week whether you think every last detail is true or how much artistic license there might be mm. she's australian uh it's called, the series is called the australian trilogy and the one i'm going to steer you to is the last of that which uh, last week you were saying how shows only get four parts well trilogies guess what only get three parts so it's um it's actually series two episode three of Sarah Randall's Australian trilogy and I just think she's a great 
um, raconteur, which you need to be, let's face it, if you're telling stories in front of an audience. But I, she has got the meeting out of her hands, and I think you'll really enjoy it. I can hear you that. typing away. You're looking up uh, sarahrandall.com or whatever. No, it's, I, was, I was more analogue than that. It was, a, it was me just moving a post-it note oh. <laughs> just to write it down. <laughs> it uh, sounded like a typewriter. I like to think you, that you think I'm so high-tech. It's, uh, it's quite nice. Um, mm. you never know. I might listen to the other two parts just to shock <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you'll be listening in bed, no doubt, uh, shaking the bed springs. And with that image, <laughs> <laughs> we must go. <laughs> it's time to say good night. And uh, thanks for being farewell, or, or good morning if you're listening to this at uh, an early hour. <laughs> if you're listening to this in bed, then <laughs> goodbye.